It's a brand new year. Things will be different. It won't be easy, but ABC 10 News is helping you prepare to take on these new challenges and make informed decisions for your family's journey. Safely back to school. ABC 10 News. Stories that matter. Hello again and welcome to our ABC 10 News Ask the Expert series. It is Safely Back to School Week uh, continuing. I'm Ben Higgins and uh, we have had so many outstanding experts who have joined us actually over the past two weeks to talk about issues facing parents and children as they get ready to head back to school this fall during the pandemic, distance learning, homeschooling, racial bias. Uh, we've talked about all the issues, science and technology yesterday and ways to continue that learning during the pandemic. Uh, but today, I, I kind of have the feeling like the focus has been on education as it should be on children. Today though, I think it's a little bit more about survival because the first thing that we all have to do uh, to get through this pandemic is we, we just gotta emerge on the other end with our sanity still intact. So to help the parents out there today, uh, we are joined by a special guest a parent coach and an international best-selling author, Lisa Smith, is with us today. Lisa, I appreciate you joining us here on our Ask the Expert series. Hi, Ben. It's my pleasure to be here with all of your viewers. So thanks for having me. Well, Lisa, first of all, why don't you tell me a little bit about your background in parenting and uh, what led you to become a parenting coach? Well, it's an interesting story. I'm a former medical device executive and had um, a son uh, a little bit later in life, and he's a strong kid through and through. And I found early on that I was trending towards dominant parenting. I was angry, reactive. There was a lot of yelling in our house and a lot of uncooperation. And I didn't like it. I didn't like myself. I didn't like how I was showing up. I had a lot of guilt and shame. And I found peaceful parenting, conscious parenting, really through just desperation and wanting to do it differently, had a huge transformation in my family in how I show up, how I parent, how I approach my strong-willed kid and just really fell in love with it. So left my corporate job and here I am. I've been parent coaching for about nine years. I've worked with clients all over the world. And really what I do is I help parents uh, really find cooperation and connection in their home and go to bed feeling good about their parenting, even on their kids' worst days. Well, let me start uh, with something you said, because before we can start addressing some of those issues and finding ways to be better parents and uh, deal with our children a little bit better, we have to recognize that. You were able to, to recognize that at some point. Uh, how would you recommend the other parents out there assess what kind of parent they are and and perhaps what changes they might want to think about making it's a it's a good question yes often you know we're triggered often we're we're getting upset about the spilled milk but it's really about so much more than the spilled milk all of the our own childhood we bring into it the stress in our life you know parenting is hard today and it's stressful and there's a lot going on you know, we've really, it takes a village to raise our kids. And so what I really recommend in the beginning is just some reflection afterwards, after a situation, after a blow up, after an event, how am I doing? What happened? What could I do differently? What triggered my anger? You know, sometimes just knowing, being honest with yourself about what really triggered your, your own explosion can be really transformative. Parenting under the best of circumstances is maybe the hardest thing you'll ever do in your life. And that's with uh, the resources of other family members that, that might be able to come and help and friends and daycare and school. We've taken away a lot of those resources by necessity during this pandemic. So kind of what's the first way you address the loss of some of those, um, as you said, the village that normally we have uh, to help take care of our kids? You know, Ben, I, here's the deal. We have created a society of kids, children, and I don't care whether we're talking about two or 22, we've created a society of kids that really can't or don't entertain themselves. And I have no judgment for the children when I say this. You know, our, 
uh, our kids today don't do what we did. They don't get up at seven o'clock in the morning and go out and play for the entire day and come home at dinner time, right? It's they don't roam the neighborhood. It's not the society. It's not the culture that we've set up today. And so, you know, our kids today, you know, before the pandemic, we were organizing soccer practice and piano lessons and play dates and and you know activities for our kids and that's really the village right it takes a village to raise our kids it's the school teacher and it's the um coach that has an influence on our kids and it's you know they were very scheduled with a lot of activities and you know with no notice to you as the parent that was all taken away from you overnight and now you are the village for your kids you are the village you are the you know, you are the lunch lady, you are the PE teacher suddenly, you are the soccer coach, you are the piano teacher, you are the monitor of the piano lessons. And that is intensified our stress for all of us, whether, you know, we're working at home or staying at home, it is really intensified, coupled with the fact that our kids are hardwired for fun, F-U-N. They, that's their whole goal in life is to enjoy, have fun, it's really created an unprecedented time of stress in parenting. And, you know, this isn't going to turn on a dime, right? We, we all, we thought it would like, oh yeah, I'll stay home for a few weeks and, and it'll get better. And right now the horizon is long. So what we need to do is we need to settle in and we need to take advantage of some parenting hacks that are really going to help us, you know, dare I say, thrive during this time of distance learning. You know, you make a good point because uh, pre-pandemic, uh, it was often difficult to keep up with our kids' busy schedules. We would need a day planner to which day uh, is soccer practice, which day is drama class, and who's going to drive them to this and who's going to drive them to that. I've found with my wife, it's like we haven't had to drive the kids anywhere. It's it's weird, but at the same time, of course, they're not getting all those enrichment opportunities. Are do you recommend trying to replace all of those, or is that impossible? in this day and age of what's going on right now that we're just trying to get through it. We're not necessarily trying to replace all the things that, that kids are missing right now. Right. You know, I think my, my number one best recommendation is that everyone just be content with what I call C-level work for parents. I'm, I'm speaking to the parents right now. You know, we have a lot going on in addition to everything we were already doing which was, you know, laundry and cooking and cleaning and shopping and getting the windows washed and making dental appointments. We're now our kids' village. We're their best friend. We're their, like I said, we're the PE teacher. We're the lunch lady. So really my best, best, best suggestion that I hope everyone takes to heart is right now for all of us, sea level work is okay. We don't need to be knocking the ball out of the park on every single activity we do. We don't need to be cleaning out the cabinet underneath the sink and making homemade bread and working on a schedule for our kids. So that's the first place I'd like to start is we have to be practical and realistic about what's capable considering you know this whole new job has been thrust onto us. This is harder. Uh, this oh, We lost your audio there for a second. This is harder, isn't it, for um, you know the parents who are overachievers, let's just call it, that, you know, want to make sure that their kids are always getting the best grades, they're going to get into the, the best colleges, they have the best extracurricular activities, versus maybe a parent who's a little more, more hey, they're kids, they're going to play, they're going to be fine, they're going to grow up, and I'm not going to worry about it too much. Um, at this point, you can't control all the little things, so it could be more difficult for the, I guess, personality A-type parents during the pandemic. 100%. And, and sometimes, you know, we, we're, we're driven as parents often by fear and anger, right? This is, this is often the source of the trigger. So let's say, Ben, that, you know, someone is, you know, someone has a kindergartner and they're really afraid that their kindergartner is going to be behind on reading. And so they set a goal that, you know, we're going to read for 20 minutes every day. And, you know, maybe it's a kid that, has a short attention span or is struggling a little bit or isn't interested in reading or isn't interested in the books that are picked. And the parent is like, you know what? I'm a goal achievement person. I set this goal and we're gonna do this. You know, it's okay if it's not working to take a break and try something else or come back to it or say, you know what? 
the goal here is to aim towards reading 20 minutes every day. But what we're doing is we're building the habit of reading. We don't have to read, you know, at an A level every single day for 20 minutes. Um, one thing that I think a lot of parents are concerned about, especially as summer comes to an end, is um, just the whirlwind of trying to deal with all of this at the same time. And I use a phrase, calming the chaos uh, of our life. Um, I mean, there's going to be chaos. That's unavoidable when you have kids. I don't think there's any way to, to say there's not going to be chaos. So what are some ways that you kind of recommend to, to kind of tamp it down and, and keep the keep the noise from overwhelming us? Yeah, I, I'd like to share three suggestions that I think could be really helpful. One is children thrive on routine. So as best you can set up a schedule and 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 stick to it, you know, do it. Um, you know, even if that includes things, you, you might have to get really creative. Like it might include making the lunches in the morning and packing them in a lunchbox, right? So that you don't have to stop working to go make the lunch. Just figure out ways to to get creative coupled with a routine. That's one, one tip. Another tip is um, make deposits in the attention account all day long. What's really important for kids is quantity, not quality. I mean, I'm sorry, quality, not quantity. So, you know, set a timer on your phone. Let's say you're working at home or your kids are in the other room gaming and you're sort of putzing around the house set an alarm for 10 minutes every hour and go connect with your kids. They don't need to, they don't need attention eight hours a day. They don't need it for two hours in a row, but little deposits all day long will make a massive difference in their uh, personality, in their patience, in their ability to follow directions. And my third suggestion is if you have, you know, a really big meeting, plan, let's say you, you have, you're going to get on Zoom and you're going to make a presentation at three o'clock today. Don't expect to tell your kids at eight o'clock in the morning, hey, mom has a really big presentation. You know, like, like if Ben said to his kids, hey, you know, I'm getting on with Lisa Smith at 930. I need you to, to stay out of the office while I'm doing this. They're not going to remember that. They're hardwired for F-U-N. So, right, you know, so what you would need to do is remind them all day, maybe, um, a half an hour before you're going to get on the call, play some games with them, go for a walk outside, prepare a snack, you know, talk about how you need some time to do your job, you know, really prepare and plan for a, a set period of time where you need to focus um, and really work with them and also make it fun for them. You know, I keep saying this, but I really want to get this across. They're hardwired for fun. They don't care that you have to work all day. That doesn't land on them. It doesn't, it doesn't mean anything to them. If you look at schools, right? Schools break learning down into little chunks and they bookend it with what? F-U-N, right? So you take the tools that the schools have learned and bring them into your home and you'll experience a lot more calm than chaos. Recess needs to be included. You're right. If I tell my kids, uh, hey, don't forget, dad's got a live stream at 930. So I need you to stay off the internet, no downloading, no uploading, um, and you gotta be quiet. Uh, they're not they're not necessarily wired to remember, <laughs> remember that. That can be difficult as we're all sharing those resources at home. Um, Lisa, let me ask you about, obviously different ages uh, are going to have to be treated differently as well. That's true when we're not in a pandemic. Taking care of a, a four-year-old is completely different than taking care of a, a nine-year-old, which is completely different than taking care of a 15 year old. So depending on kind of the ages of some of the people, kids that are watching this today, um, how would you suggest to modify some of these suggestions? Well, I think you have to work with the attention span of the kids. And, you know, it's really important to understand where they're at. I, I work with my clients all the time, even pre pandemic to understand where their kids are at developmentally. And most of us make the assumption, and it doesn't really matter whether your kid is two or 15, most of us make the assumption that our kid's higher brain is much more developed than it really is. So it's really about understanding and wrapping your brain around what is my kid capable of? If you have, it's, it's funny, if you have a two and four-year-old, right, you're, there's going to be a lot more little chunks 
uh, you know, you may only be able to get things done in 15 or 20 minute increments, right? And then you may have to go and interact with them. But again, if you get a schedule and a rhythm and a routine going, you're going to be a lot more successful. Now, if you have a 15 year old, right, it's easier to ignore them because they're sort of off. Chances are on their phone, right? Because that's where 15 year olds like to spend their time nowadays or gaming. And but that's just as important to be checking in with them and interacting with them because you know, their brains will be mush at the end of the day if they spend a 10 hour day, you know, on electronics. So it's it's really I can't emphasize enough the schedule component of this, the routine, and then being practical and educated on the development of your kids and what they're actually capable of at that age. Uh, similarly to different ages, we also have parents who have one child, who have two childs. I see uh, Lauren writing in four kids at home at the same time. Um, obviously, you have to modify there as well. Uh, what are some of your tips for dealing with multiple children at the same time in the home? We know that's going to be harder. No doubt about that. For sure. For sure. Again, you know, I think it's about coming up. It, it, it's really there has never been a time in parenting that begs for creativity more than right now. So a couple examples or ideas or hacks, if you will, for parents with multiple children and even single children is figure out your resources, right? Let's say you're a two, two parenting home. Um, what I recommend there is get practical about the schedule. Let's say both of you are working from home. One of you might have to get up at 6 a.m. and work from six to noon while the other parent is with the four children, and then you might have to switch. The other parent works from noon to six, and you make these rules, right? When I'm working, I stay out of the parenting. I go in the back bedroom. Maybe you have to go over to your to your mother-in-law's house if she lives nearby and work from there. Um, you know, those are some examples. Another idea might be find another working parent, and you know, my kids go over to your house one day a week and and you you know entertain my kids and then we flip-flop right it really requires getting creative right now and this is this is one area where i think things like you know what what you're doing here at abc and pinterest and social media and networking and looking for ideas could be incredibly helpful i'm running a series right now where i'm trying to provide you know lots of ideas and and sharing of of um hacks that work to allow us to get work done right now because i appreciate how important that is coupled with parenting in a calm way that really supports our children's emotional development uh, and then over this these past couple of weeks as we've been doing these ask the expert sessions um, i keep seeing the same comments what what about single parents what about parents who both have to work out of the house what about parents with uh, special needs children I mean, there's no doubt that those are close to impossible scenarios right now that are so difficult. But it does it does all come back to something you said at the beginning is that uh, be forgiving of yourself and, and do the best job that you absolutely can, because uh, really that there's not much more that can be expected other than, uh, you know, try to make the best decisions as they come and, and be kind to yourself. I, I couldn't agree more, Ben. At the Beastle Parent, our mantra is progress over perfection. Please don't try to be a perfect parent. Don't compare yourself to anyone else. Don't compare yourself to how it was for you when you were a kid or someone you see, you know, on Facebook or YouTube or, you know, Mary Poppins is a movie. There was there was a million takes on that on creating that utopic vision of patience for parenting. And so we really go at the Peaceful Parent for progress over perfection. And what I really encourage people to do is work every day to be a better parent than you were yesterday. That's the only standard you need to hold yourself to. Because if every day you get just a little bit better than yesterday over the course of your child's lives, you know, you will get to the end point that you want of being a peaceful parent. And, you know, I also really love my Angelou saying, which is when you know better, you do better. So, so just keep looking for tools and tips and, you know, keep filling your toolbox, if you will, so that you can assist yourself with that little incremental improvement every day and you'll get there. 
Uh, Susan says, all this is easier said than done. I raised four children. Yeah, yeah, it is It is much easier to talk about it on a Facebook live stream. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be hard. I mean, there's no there's no tips that you can give or any of us can give that it's going to make this this easy, right? We're trying to make it um, we're trying to make it survivable at this point. Yes, but having said that, I would like to offer, you know, please don't lose hope. There's always hope. You love your children. I know that. And it's always possible to learn new tools, to bring new tips into your parenting. You're not broken. Nothing's gone wrong. You know, there, there is always hope to just make little small changes that are going to make a big difference in your family. Let's talk about the peacefulparent.com, uh, your website. I, I know you have the book available and uh, classes as well, but there are also uh, some free resources for parents as well. Uh, let us know how parents can connect with you if they're interested and in, in what they can find. I appreciate that, Ben. And I'm really excited to tell everyone, if you go to thepeacefulparent.com and you just hang on that website for a minute, a window will pop up and you can sign up. I offer a free um, mini course, a free peaceful parenting mini course. And once you sign up, you're going to get three videos, one each day with some really simple practical tips that you can learn in five minutes and put into place right away that day within your family um, and, and experience a massive shift in how you parent. And this is what I was talking about. I, I offer really simple practical uh, tips and tools and support and ideas that make a big difference. So I'm really excited to offer everybody during this time right now, um, you know, a, a, a three video course that can have a huge impact. I saw there on your website, uh, you know, you grew up and the yelling was the norm in the family and you vowed you weren't ever gonna do that. And now you find as a parent, you're yelling way more than you want to. Is, is that the case where either we, we turn into our parents or we turn into the exact opposite of our parents? Isn't there some middle ground in there somewhere? Well, you know, I like to say I grew up in a yelling household and if yelling were an Olympic sport, I'd come from a dynasty of gold medalists. <laughs> but what happens is, you know, when we're children, these neural pathways get formed in our brain. And then when we start parenting, you know, that parent child role is unique. And when we start parenting um, and things get stressful, our brain wants to revert back to what we learned as a child. And it is possible to go in and fill those neural pathways. And I call them ski tracks, pack in snow and create new neural pathways. I, you know, I was a yeller. I yelled a lot. And, you know, now I have a 16 year old son. He's he's strong willed. He's got an opinion. He, um, you know, at times likes to challenge things. He doesn't like to be told what to do. And there's very little yelling in our house today. I we have a completely different way of handling things. And, you know, I've worked with and I, I say this is proof that it's possible to be the parent you've always wanted to be. I've worked with thousands of people around the world at this point. And, and you can, I don't care what your story is from your past. It doesn't matter how intense it is or tragic or what you've been through. You can learn a new way to parent that feels for both of you, for you and your child, it feels like connection and cooperation. Well, I, I've spent these past couple of weeks uh, getting such great information from so many experts. Uh, I'm going to kind of wrap up here by asking one for myself because I'm okay. a parent of two teenagers, 17 and 15 year old, and I'm I'm not a yeller. I'm in fact, I might be the pushover parent a little bit. And I've always struggled with, you know, how to be firm yet be true to myself, which is I'm a pretty easygoing guy. And, you know, I've got good boys. So, you know, I'm not too worried. But at the same time, I feel like I could, you know, push him a little bit harder. Um, what would be your advice to me as as a parent coach? So it sounds, Ben, like you trend. I, I trended at one end of the extreme as a dominant parent, and you trend at the other extreme, which is permissive parenting, right? Which is yep. where we we sometimes allow, if dominant parenting is we allow, or we, we take our power to come over our children, permissive parenting is we allow our children to use their power to come over us. And so one of, this, one of the helpful tools of permissive parents is to take a moment to, to Set the limit with yourself first. You know, what do I want my kids to do? Let You have a 15 and 17 year old. So let's say it's about curfew. 
right? And and you're like, you know, I really, I, you know, this is not a good example in the pandemic, but it came to mind. <laughs> when we get out of sheltering in place and your kids want to go out, like they're pent up, they're restless, and your 17-year-old wants to go out, and you say, you know, okay, I need you to be home by 11. And he gives you a hard time about it. Dad, I don't want to be home by 11. And dad, right? And that that's sort of for permissive parents, that can be a little bit of a challenge. So what you do want to do is set a limit ahead of time. You want to say, look, you know, this is this is what I'm expecting. I, I the, the rule is that you need to be home by 11. And if you choose not to do that, right? So we're putting the onus on the 17 year old. If you choose not to be home by 11, then this is going to be the consequence. This is what's going to happen. And you've set it all up front so that in the heat of the moment, there has, doesn't have to be a ton of yelling and confrontation. And then all you have to do is follow through. I, it, that's not always easy, but you've at least had a talk with yourself first and you've set the limit when you're calm and really able to think it through and then communicate that, you know, we call it peacefully setting limits, communicate that um, with your kids before the event so they know the rules as well. Lisa Smith, thepeacefulparent.com, parent coach. Uh, really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for taking part in our ABC 10 News Ask the Experts series. It was absolutely my pleasure to be here. Thank you. I, I also want to thank everyone who has been logging on, uh, viewing our series these past couple of weeks. I know uh, we couldn't possibly answer every question uh, that came in our comments screen, but uh, uh, hopefully if you still have questions, uh, you can continue to send them in and uh, we're going to try to continue with resources like this online, especially here during the pandemic. As, as Lisa said, it, uh, it takes a village, and uh, we're just trying to be a small part of that village moving forward. But uh, I hope everyone has a great weekend. Thanks for joining us on our ABC 10 News Ask the Experts series on Facebook Live. I'm Ben Higgins. Have a great day.